let's see. Okay, so asked a general question on like someone was disagreeing with my choice of not vaccinating someone. Uh, what? Uh, how? How would I give an answer to that? Actually, my personal thing is, you know, if I've chosen something for my child, and I, and I know I feel it's right for the child, and someone is coming up to me and saying I've made the wrong choice, I would transcend that being an issue for me, uh, because. Um, uh, so l let's say I, I made a decision for my kid and someone says you've done the wrong thing, you're morally wrong. I would transcend it so that even if they kept saying that to me, I would, it would not have any effect on me. Uh, okay, so let, let me explain that. I interact with people uh, at the level of consciousness to what they trigger me at. Okay? So let's say someone says to me, like, you're wrong, you're bad, you speak a lot of rubbish. If, I'm, if, I get, um, if I get hooked into that, if I'm in now anger and resentment and want to make them wrong, then, I mean, Hawkins has a book called Power Versus Force. It's a, it's a, it's a nice book that he's written. So when I, uh, when I try and uh, um, interact with someone from my ego, uh, I will be trying to interact them with, from a place of force. I.e., let me tell you how you're wrong, and I'll have the energy of trying to, trying to influence you to agree with my opinion. But when you put out energy into the universe from an ego positionality, i.e., you try and force someone to agree with your position and to tell them that they're wrong, you are trying to use force in the universe. Whenever you use force in the universe, the universe will have a counterforce against you because you're trying to, you're you're tr you're you're acting you're acting on the universe from a place of ego, i.e. you're trying to force something from from ego. So if someone like if someone inflates my ego and tells me I'm wrong, and I'm feeling a lot of like, well, let me come up with a clever answer, and let me show you you're wrong through moral superiority, then. What I would do initially is I wouldn't respond and I would transcend it because then I'll be going up the levels of consciousness. So I'd process any, any anger or fear or, uh, around the situation and just feel those feelings out. And then I would, I would um, okay, you know, I would, I would, anything that's come up as a trigger, like what they've said to me or how that's affected me, I, I would either cancel my belief in those or place that into God's infinite light and love and pray for a miracle and disappear that as being a problem for me, i.e. I'd be transcending that. As, um, so to transcend something is like when somebody says something to me, you're not triggered at all. It has no effect to me. So someone comes in and says, like, I think you're totally dumb and useless. If I've transcended that, there'll be no reaction from me. In fact, I will not notice it. I'll carry straight on. Now, if it's like I suddenly go into fear and trauma and I want to kill them, you know, then that means I wouldn't try and act on that or tell them or respond to them. I'd go away and feel it, process it, uh, pray for a miracle, go to the observer of that until I feel I've transcended that. Because my level of consciousness, I'm resolving that karmic incident. My level of consciousness and my and my perception of what happened will be changing as my level of consciousness increases. My, my perception of seeing what was wrong will shift. And then when I get to transcendence, my level of consciousness will now be what will speak to them or what, what will speak to them if it's necessary. Sometimes it will not even be necessary to speak to them. It could be like inconsequential. But if you do, the level of consciousness that will tackle that problem will, will have a much better outcome for peace and love and transcendence and the benefit for both parties. Whereas if I come from a level of ego, uh, then that vibration will have the response. From ego you can win. You can win bat battles from ego. But uh, it will not be, uh, it will bring less harmony and peace in the world. Um, so that's the thing. Just very, very quickly, in terms of medical, the thing with, uh, you know, I should say this, like. I, you know, my experience is if, when you cancel something with illnesses, I mean, I, I have, have a degree in biochemistry, I was a pharmaceutical analyst in the stock market. The thing with, I mean, you know, Hawkins talks a lot about placebos. 
you know, like if you, like if I put on a white coat and say I have a PhD and I've done pharma trials and say this, this sugar pill, I know it's really a sugar pill, but I've just said I've, it's 99.9%, uh, you know, it has a 99.9999% chance of curing your cancer within two days. There was a, actually, there was an interesting YouTube video where they did that and people's cancers were like going. And it was like, it was just a placebo. You know, that was the power. So, so the thing of, you know, if, if you believe something, then it has great power to have an effect in a positive or a negative way through beliefs. Um, hence the thing of, um, Hawkins also talked about illnesses and how illnesses come into, you know, like if we suddenly talk about, um, like, uh, I, uh, I don't know, like, uh, what could it be? Like, there's a, new, there's a new plague called pollen plague out in the world, you know. And the, the symptoms for pollen plague are that you start to sniff, and then three days later you're dead, okay? And if I start to, and I, call, and I label it pollen plague, I'm PhD in pollen plague, and I've got the symptoms down. And we now have widespread news coverage of this new pollen plague symptoms then within, within a few weeks and months, like lots of people will be coming out with pollen plague, you know, and this new illness will just by publicity, and you just tell them what the symptoms are they need to have. So then people will start to have those symptoms and then there'll be more and more. So that's how things through beliefs and new illnesses through beliefs get transmitted through the world. But you can also cancel your belief. So that's how actually illnesses, illnesses come. If you say there's a new illness, uh, you know, these things. So as we spread the programs and the symptoms you need to have from this new illness and you have enough media coverage of it, people will start to get that. Why does that happen? It's because really when you have repressed guilt, I mean, the Course talks a lot about guilt. You know, guilt means that you deserve punishment. So when you have a lot of unresolved guilt in you, your, that vibration is looking for an illness to punish you with from the collective. So it might pick up cancer, and if there's a new illness, we just call the new latest illness is pollen plague. I, ma I made that up, it's not really a real illness, <laughs> just in case anyone tries to get the symptoms. If, oh, no. if, if you get 